So today I wanted to talk to you guys, uh, today's is kind of a different video. I wanted to talk to you guys about why I don't need Chinese in Taiwan. But I'm going to leave it on a question. Do I want to learn? Okay, here's the thing. If I'm asking you that, you probably already know the answer is yes, right? Anyway, starting off, if you guys can subscribe to my channel and like my videos, that helps me out a lot. I'm almost at 150 subscribers, which really pushes me to try to create better content for you guys. And I really appreciate the fact that you guys have been subscribing. I hope you guys enjoy these videos. And if you guys don't, sorry, Taiwan is really trying to push this uh, English agenda, I guess, in a sense, where they're trying to make English a second language in Taiwan. And that makes it so that there are a lot of people in Taiwan trying to learn English. My job in Taiwan is an English teacher. And as an English teacher, I cannot use Chinese in the classroom. I can't use Chinese ever actually while I'm at work because it tells the students that they can be able to uh, pull down their guard in a sense and start trying to speak to you in Chinese. Zhang Wen, Zhang Wen, teacher knows Chinese. Ni hao, teacher. If you allow them to hear that you can speak Chinese, they might kind of rescind and go backwards in a sense. So they want you to maintain this English language a lot of the time. And I don't blame them actually, to be honest, it's very beneficial for students to be able to experience English fully. It's a completely immersive experience. So I don't use Chinese ever in the classroom. But outside of work is a totally different scenario. I have a scooter, okay? I have a cell phone, I have my computers, I have my cell phone bill, I have a license, I have different things that I've had to get and acquire while I've been out here in Taiwan. And for that, you do need Chinese, right? Do I speak Chinese? No. I am lucky enough to have friends who have helped me pretty much the whole way. In every situation, a lot of it's been trial and error. It's been fire and flames in a sense. You get thrown into a situation and you have to make a quick decision now. I have made dumb decisions. That right there cost me more than it should have because the fact that I'm a foreigner, I didn't know what I was doing. I've also, as I said in my prior videos that I'll probably post up here, about how I failed my driver's license test because of little errors and little grammatical things that I'm not familiar with. Not being able to speak Chinese is kind of a hindrance in a lot of respects while I'm out here in Taiwan. I essentially can't read, I can't speak, I can't write, and I can't listen. But as the year has progressed, I've actually started to pick up more language. And with that, I came here with nothing other than maybe ni hao or really simple words like hello or bye bye. And one of the things that I've worked at is trying to get better at understanding and listening to people. My uh, big push for myself personally is to be able to understand what people are saying so that way I can respond, whether it be gestures, whether it be actual words, I, it, it just dependent. But life on the daily is actually kind of a struggle because the fact that we have no communicative skills and when you don't have communicative skills, it makes it so that way you really struggle trying to get from place to place. Do I need Chinese to survive here? No, you really don't. You can get around just fine without Chinese. And especially as a tourist, if you're coming out here just to visit, do it. It's really cool. I'm not going to lie. Most people here will go out of their way to try to help you. I'll walk into a restaurant and even if they don't have an English menu, they will try their best to try to muster up as much English as they can to explain what it is in English for me. It's really cool because it's really inviting. It's really warm for us Westerners in a sense. Anybody who speaks English for the most part. But do I want to learn Chinese? Yeah, of course, I'm not gonna lie. It would be really cool not only to have a third language, it would be really cool to be able to speak to people in a country like Taiwan. Just because the fact that I don't have the opportunity to speak to people, it makes it very hard on a daily basis and I want to be able to communicate with people. And when you're trying to make gestures to try to explain something like, oh, this, it, you look kind of dumb and it sucks. But as you get more advanced in your language skills, you start to be able to pick up different ways to communicate with people. And I can't speak properly. I'm not going to say that I can. However, I've still been, uh, I've been able to pick up cues of how they respond to what my body actions are a lot better. Most people look at me and they think all oh, foreigner, okay, he's probably not going to speak Chinese. And that's a benefit to me because the fact that it gives me that opportunity to be able to not feel like a burden everywhere I go. I mean, I kind of am a burden because most people are probably like, ah, stupid foreigner, but they still really go out of their way to help us which is awesome. Why do I not speak Chinese though? I'm lazy. 
and I get distracted easily. That's the biggest problem. If it wasn't for me being lazy and getting distracted so easily, I sit at home and I do things that I shouldn't be doing and I don't go out in the public settings like I should. Because when you go out in the public settings, when you go out in the situations where you have to interact with people, a lot of the time you can actually pick up a lot more language. You can understand, say you're sitting at a restaurant, you can have them ask questions. And I mean, when we do go to restaurants, I do understand most of the questions now. But going into public and sitting around and talking to people is a benefit beyond words to be able to understand language. So the question is, after everything, how do I get around? I've got friends, I've got Google Translate. Um, surprisingly, you would be really happy to know that Google Translate does wonders. There's different features in Google Translate that make it, uh, make it so that way you can read menus, you can uh, talk to people, you can communicate. But with the advent of technology, it makes it so that way I can get around a lot easier than I would have been able to. Maybe for people who have been here for 10, 20 years, their lives would have been a lot harder at the beginning and you would have been forced to pretty much learn how to speak the language. Whereas people like me or tourists don't have to speak the language necessarily, but we should, we really should try. You're in Taiwan, you should learn how to speak to the Taiwanese people because you can learn a lot from their culture, you can learn a lot from their people. And if you go out and actually make the effort to try to learn the language, not only does it enhance your abilities, it gives you a lot more social power. That's really all I had to say for this video today, guys. Um, life is not easy out here. It's definitely a lot harder than it could be if I was going to live in a Western country, for example. However, in the end, it's still an awesome experience. And if you are thinking about coming to Taiwan or you're thinking about moving to Taiwan to be able to teach English or something along those lines, don't be afraid if you can't speak Chinese. You don't need to speak Chinese to come here. However, I will tell you, you will want to learn after you stay here for a little bit. You will get around just fine. And the people here have been extraordinarily helpful. However, just understand, it will be a struggle, but it should not deter you from coming out to a place like this. That's all I had for today. You guys can subscribe if you want. If you guys like the video, please do that. Uh, take care and I will see you guys later. Bye.